Okay, I, th I think we're good. My computer is rolling. Yes, it is. I think it is rolling. There's a little counter and everything. Good morning, everybody. Um, yeah, good morning. How's everybody doing? Uh, you'll probably notice that uh, it's me today. Uh, Shane is uh, occupied, so he asked if I would um, talk about the Word of God today. And so that's what I'm here to do. Let me just say uh, good morning, everyone. Yeah, good morning, everyone. Oh, goodness. I was up till 2 o'clock last night um, for no reason at all. I just was. And uh, so I am reaping the benefits of it today. I have my Elmo Loves Morning uh, coffee cup uh, simply because uh, this Elmo cup has the max capacity for um, holding uh, these things. So, yeah, I'm revved and ready to go. So, uh, just a quick little announcement uh, thingy, my Bob is uh, good morning, Kay. Uh, nice to have you join us. Um, we've got uh, the live stream happening tonight at 6 at uh, Liberty Lake Church Facebook and Vimeo, and I believe YouTube as well. Um, we're working to get our subscriptions up, so if you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, that would be great because then we can uh, do more stuff. Uh, the higher subscriptions you get, I think it's like 100, you, you get little perks and uh, things of that nature on it, so uh, please subscribe to that. Um, we also have uh, 10 o'clock morning devotions, uh, either with myself or with Shane uh, or with other people possibly in the future. Um, tonight at the 6 p.m. Uh, live service, uh, I'll be leading it along with uh, Chris Fries. So uh, be sure to join us there. And then we have Sundays as well at 10 o'clock, uh, Liberty Lake Church live stream. So, uh, yeah, I think that's, that's it as far as announcements go. So... Uh, let me just say a quick prayer to kind of get this get this party started. Uh, blessed Father, thank you for uh, this morning, and uh, thank you for um, being with me uh, uh, through last night. Um, whatever reason you kept me up or I kept me up, um, I pray that uh, uh, today um, uh, your blessing would flow over and that your mercies would be anew and that your grace would be uh, uh, continuous and uh I ask that you bless all the people that come on this morning and uh, that you would touch hearts uh, through whatever it is that you want to show us through your word today. In Jesus' name, amen. Sweet. So uh, we're going to be reading out of Psalm 17. And so uh, good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. Uh, okay, so we're going to be reading out of Psalm 17. Um, I'm reading on my ESV. And uh, so I'm just going to start reading it, then we'll just kind of go over it a little bit. Um, this is a prayer of David, and um, the title is actually, In the Shadow of Your Wings. And uh, that uh, phrase is used in this chapter. Um, and so uh, th this is one of those prayers that is actually... Um, uh, yeah, this is this is considered a prayer for deliverance. Um, uh, David obviously has quite a few of those, um, and this title in the shadow of your wings is actually also used in the prayer um, in Habakkuk chapter three, um, which is which is fascinating. And um, it's this idea that uh, uh, not that God has wings or anything like that, but that God is protective over the people uh, when we call out to Him for deliverance. And so let's read what. Uh, David has to say um, as he calls out to the Lord. Hear a just cause, O Lord. Attend to my cry. Give ear to my prayer from lips free of deceit. From your presence, let my vindication come. Let your eyes behold the right. You have tried my heart. You have visited me by night. You have tested me, but you will find nothing. I have purposed that my mouth will not transgress. With regard to the works of man, by the word of of your lips. I have avoided the ways of violence. My steps have held fast to your paths. My feet have not slipped. I will call upon you, for you will answer me, O God. Incline your ear to me. Hear my words. 
wondrously show your steadfast love, O Savior, of those who seek refuge from your adversaries at your right hand. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. From the wicked who do me violence, my deadly enemies who surround me, they close their hearts to pity. With their mouths they speak arrogantly. They have now surrounded our steps. They set their eyes to cast us to the ground. It is like a lion eager to tear, as a young lion lurking in ambush. Arise, O Lord, confront him, subdue him. Deliver my soul from the wicked by your sword. From men by your hand, O Lord, from men of the world, whose portion is in this life. They fill their womb with treasure. They are satisfied with children, and they leave their abundance to their infants. As for me, I shall behold your faith, your face in righteousness. When I awake, I shall be like, I shall be satisfied with your likeness. Mm. Oh, that's so good. Um, morning, Reuben. How you doing? Okay, so this psalm is cut up uh, into three parts. Um, a vindication uh, section, a protection, and salvation. Um, vindication, uh, David is uh, proclaiming and setting ground on where he stands uh, with the Lord. Um, not from a state of pride and, ooh, I got it all figured out, but based on God's faithfulness. Uh, morning, Steve. <laughs> uh, so uh, this psalm begins and ends uh, with righteousness, verse 1 and verse 15. Uh, Hear my just cause, O Lord, attend to my cry. And then verse 15, uh, as for me, I shall behold your face in righteousness. Uh, David wants God to examine him and vindicate him before his enemies. And uh, God knew that David's prayer was sincere and that his life, though not sinless, was blameless. He was a man of integrity whose cause was a righteous one. Um, so it, it, David's declaration of righteousness was not an evidence of, of pride or hypocrisy, like I said, but um, of faithfulness to the Lord in difficult situations. David had a good conscience before the Lord. And um, uh, good morning, Amanda. How you doing? And I, I got to thinking... Like, what does the Bible have to say about conscience? Because it is, uh, it's a part of reality. It's part of every person. And uh, I've heard it said that um, uh, our conscience lets us know what's right and what's wrong. Um, it tells us, what, or it gives us that inclination of what's right and what's wrong. Um, the, the world has a, a different definition of conscience. In fact, I'm just going to look it up. Because I've been taking a lot of uh, biblical counseling classes and I'm still I'm still learning stuff, but let's see. Let's go conscience. And if anybody can look it up before I do, that'd be awesome as well. Um, an inner feeling or voice viewed as acting as a guide to the rightness or wrongness of one's behavior. Hmm. That's so cool. That is awesome. So this is so cool. So. Uh, David, um, like he says here, you have tried my heart, you have visited me by night, you have tested me, and you will find nothing. I have purposed that my mouth will not transgress. With regard by the works of man, by the word of your lips, I have avoided the ways of violent, of the violent. My steps have held fast to your paths, my feet have not slipped. So, he starts out with, from your presence let my vindication come, let your eyes behold the right. So David is standing before the throne, obviously calling out to him, Father, I need your help. This is um, a, a, a prayer of uh, deliverance and uh, and help for him to, to vindicate him, to protect him, to rescue him. And he's saying that my conscience is clear before you. And uh, that's such a bold thing for a man like David to say, because immediately as I was reading that, I was thinking about the, the, the whole Bathsheba story, and I'm like, you really are you really like you're you're completely clear you can say that with boldness that you're you're fine and again it wasn't david's um safety he found in himself but it was that he found in the lord um verse uh, seven wondrously show your steadfast love O savior of those who seek refuge 
from their adversaries at your right hand. Hide me, or keep me as the apple of your eye, hide me in the shadow of your wings. So David is putting complete and utter and absolute trust in God's faithfulness and in God's steadfast love so that he can say, you have tried my heart. You've tested me and you'll find nothing. I have purpose that my mouth will not transgress and I've avoided the ways of the violent. I'm, I'm clear, I'm clean because of you. And this was old covenant. And David is standing before the, he's calling him savior, right? And so God is the one who saves him. David can stand before him completely justified. Um, I'm going to go to another script, set of scriptures here um, in Hebrews. So Hebrews chapter 4, um, verse 14 through 16. Hebrews chapter 4, verses 14 through 16. Since then we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus the Son of God. Let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So now we're in New Covenant, and Jesus is the high priest and our Savior and the one who protects us and defends us. Let me have a look at these. Uh, oh, good morning, everybody. And um, because of that, we can come before him boldly because Jesus went through all the same stuff and all the things that David is calling out for deliverance from um, to the nth degree. And now Jesus is our high priest who sympathizes with us, who understands us, and can actually redeem us and save us from that. And we'll go into the salvation part of the, uh, of the psalm in a minute. Um, and so the response, because of where we stand with Christ, is that let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace. It's not arrogance, it's confidence. And it's not, it, it's more than confidence, it's Godfidence. I've, I've heard that before, and I think it's funny, it's cute. Um, so th there's another, uh, yeah, here we go. Hebrews 10, 22, actually I'll read 19 uh, through 23. Uh, Hebrews 10, uh, chapter, uh, uh, Hebrews chapter 10, verses 19 through 23, in case you're reading along with me. Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the holy places by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way, that he opened for us through the curtain, that is, through his flesh, since we have a high priest over the house of God. So since we have all that, let us draw near with a true heart, in full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience, and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. Like it says back in Psalms, wondrously show your steadfast love, O Savior of those who seek refuge from their adversaries at your right hand. Um, I'll be honest, this, uh, ooh, we've got a question. What was the verse number in Hebrews? Uh, that would be a ver, uh, I'll, I'll just type it out. Let's see, it's uh, Hebrews 10, 19 through 22. Um, uh, for for y'all's convenience. So that whole clarity of conscience and being completely washed clean of your sins to where I can stand before God and say yes is something that I actually struggle with. Um, especially when uh, I first uh, came to the Lord, and um, it was it was something that uh, yeah I really struggled with because. Um, y'all don't know my past. Well, if you've heard my testimony, you've, you know my past. But, um, I have made a lot of mistakes. And God has been so faithful and redeemed me from all of it. The, the thing that I struggle stepping into is this type of confidence that David, um, is also riding on and is just flowing in 
And like the writer of Hebrews is saying, let's continue to do that. Um, I struggle with it because, um, again, I know what I've done. I know the mess-ups that I've made. And I know um, the people that I've hurt. And there are plenty of people um, whom I've hurt that have uh, yet, yet to forgive me. Um, have yet to, um, uh, yeah, ha we've yet to reconcile as much as I want to. But according to this, God is concerned about my relationship with him first. He's not out to make me perfect. He's out to make me holy. And he's not out to make anybody else perfect. He's out to make us holy. He wants to redeem our lives from the inside out. But it starts from the inside. And that change begins from the inside. And God is asking me not to base his, my trust and faith in his steadfast love and unconditional grace on um, an unconditional love, I should say, um, He's not asking me to place my faith in that uh, based on the exterior results from other people or from maybe how, just how my emotions feel. Ooh, I feel I feel unconditionally loved today. So, yeah, God's got my back. He's asking me to trust him based on his promises in his word. And his word says that I can rest in the shadow of his wings and that I am the apple of his eye and that he will deliver me and like verse 15 says I shall behold your face in righteousness when I awake I shall be satisfied with your likeness God is ultimately trying to make each of us like Jesus and that comes on the forefront and he's saying rest rest in how I see you how I've cleared your constant conscience rest in that don't rest in what other people say or other people react or whatever because their words, I'm just going to be bold here, their words do not matter. My words matter. What I say about you. So stand before me with your conscience sprinkled by the blood of my son and rest in that and don't move from that. Um, if I were to write this in a monologue, which I guess this kind of is, I would put a word of caution, colon, um, don't lean too far to the left to think that, um, uh, I don't, I don't lean too far to the left to think that all of uh, my past sin has no consequences. Um, but I know between me and the Lord, we good. All right. Um, God has completely vindicated me and redeemed me. And when you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, his son, he will completely vindicate and redeem you. And that's where it starts. That's where change starts. And that's where deliverance starts. Okay. So David is resting in that, in the faithfulness and steadfast love of Jesus Christ. Let's see. Morning, mom. How you doing? <laughs> um, and so uh, David um, is pleading that God will also keep him. Um, he uh, often will, in, in, in the Psalms, he'll often uh, make a physical representation of uh, deliverance by uh, comparing to actual physical enemies that were either pursuing him or just, uh, um, just the uh, reality that there, are, uh, that there are people out there who respond like verses 10 through 12 says, they close their hearts to pity with their mouths. They speak arrogantly. They have now surrounded our steps. They have set their eyes to cast us to the ground. He's like a lion eager to tear as a young lion lurking in ambush. So uh, David is calling out to the Lord to deliver me from such people who want to surround me, who close their hearts to pity with their mouths. They speak arrogantly. So here, David, in the first part of this uh, of uh, this psalm, he's he's speaking confidently that 
I, you will not find any my steps have held fast to your paths, Lord. My feet have not slipped because of your steadfast love. And I look to you because of that. And deliver me from people who speak arrogantly that, oh, I'm good. I, I'm, I'm, I'm okay because uh, of the things that I have. Um, continuing on to where God rescues David. Um, verse 13, arise, O Lord, confront him, subdue him, meaning the, the man who is like a lion, eager to tear at him, eager to tear him up, um, who wants to uh, uh, destroy him. Um, Deliver my soul from the wicked by your sword, from men by your hand, O Lord, from the men of the world whose portion is in this life. They fill their womb with treasure, they are satisfied with children, and they leave their abundance to their infants. Um, this is... Uh, Verse, verse 14 can sometimes be difficult to translate, um, but the sense seems clear. God is storing up judgment for David's enemies, and their only reward would be in this life, not in the afterlife. Um, in a lot of the stuff that we're going through now and today, uh, the things that we get to look forward to, at least I know that I've been really reflecting on, is uh, God's redemption of all of creation, including his people. And uh, it's not something that you can necessarily see, um, but we will get to see. And that's that's where faith comes in. Um, it's something that's very difficult for the world to grasp because verse 14, it's very clear that, that the people of this world, all they can grasp is, um, is the things of this life, the portion of this life. They fill their womb with treasures. They're satisfied with children. They leave their abundance to their infants. They're just... Living in the, I'm, I'm being bold here, living this life and procreating and just adding on and adding on uh, to things of this world uh, to keep going. And David is saying, I don't, I don't want to be in, in that crowd. I want to be delivered from that crowd. So, um. So verse 15, as for me, I shall behold your face in righteousness. When I awake, I shall be satisfied with your likeness. Like I said, God's ultimate goal is to make us like Jesus. And that doesn't always come about um, easily. <laughs> it will uh, often be be through struggles. Um, and we're going to go in into detail on that tonight. Um, uh, a Christian, A Christian's life amidst suffering. And uh, what does that look like? And uh, what I find interesting is that David would not be pouring his heart out with these words if he were not in the midst of this. If he were not in the midst of being surrounded. Um, surrounded by the wicked and the violent. And what's interesting is that he equates it to, I have nothing violent. I have not transgressed in my mouth. You can search my heart. You can search everything. Check out my life. You'll find that I've not slipped anywhere. So deliver me from people who have. Deliver me from the ways of people who have. Because other people can't make him do that stuff. But there are people around him. There's Even, even if there weren't any people around him, the spiritual forces of this world are inclined to that nature of transgression and sin and selfishness and pride. And all of an arrogance and all of those things and and selfishness of I'm just I, I want I want what I want I want uh, to relish in the physical treasures and blessings of this life where David is saying I am looking forward to waking up and being satisfied that I'm like you and I want to behold your face in righteousness and the only one who can make a person righteous is Jesus Christ himself. Um, I'm going to, let's see, I'm going to close with a verse from Titus. So we're going to go to Titus. If I can find it here. Oh, but it, there it is. So Titus chapter 3. Yeah, Titus chapter 3. Verses 3 through 7. 
Titus chapter 3, verses 3 through 7. Read along with me. For we ourselves were once foolish, disobedient, led astray, slaves to various passions and pleasures, passing our days in malice and envy, hated by others and hating one another. But when the goodness and loving kindness of God, our Savior, appeared, he saved us, not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that being justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Are you needing to be um, delivered today? Are you really struggling? I mean, with this whole COVID thing, a lot of us are isolated from people. So I know I'm struggling <laughs> in that respect. And um, my prayers have been along the lines of Psalm 17. God, help me out because I'm really struggling. I'm anxious. That might have been why I stayed up till 2 o'clock last night. I might just be anxious. Um, and yet the, the final, um, call out that David has is verse 15. As for me, I shall behold your face in righteousness. When I awake, I shall be satisfied with your likeness. Are you satisfied knowing that God has redeemed your soul and that Christ has given you a clean conscience before him. And you can go boldly before him. Um, the Christian culture is so um, flowing in that reality, which is amazing. Um, that I sometimes, that boldness of a clear conscience to go before the throne of grace can very easily teeter-totter into arrogance. Because I'm a Christian, I can do whatever I want. And I can say whatever I want on Facebook, or I can act however I act um, because of my um, political party or whatever. And so I'm going to go out there and do whatever. And as Christians, because we are Christians, what an amazing reality that we get to stand before the God of the universe and we get to be with him forever starting now. That's a reality that we should rejoice in and not take advantage of and enjoy the Lord, that we are like him and that we are righteous and we get to behold him every day. Let me, let me pray for everybody this morning, if you'll permit me. Blessed Father, um, I ask that you uh, bless each person that joined me today and uh, those who didn't as well. And I just ask that you would deliver us, Father. Deliver us from our wrong thinking, our pride, and our arrogance, Father, and uh, our wicked thoughts and uh, habitual sins. And Father, I also ask that uh, you would help us in the midst of this, Father, um, as we are surrounded by um, this, this COVID thing, by uh, angry people, and by a frustrated, um, a frustrated nation. And uh, Father, we praise you in the midst of this for what you've done and what your son has done for each and every person. You know, the, the, the good, the bad, the ugly, it, whoever. You love us all, Father, and you desire all of us to come before the throne of grace. And uh, in confidence, Lord, we receive uh, the sprinkling of your blood and a clear conscience, knowing full well that you've helped us through it. And if our consciences are stained in any way, Father, um, because of your blood, we can come before, before you boldly and confess and leave that stuff at the altar and at the foot of the cross. We thank you for your son and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Brothers and sisters, thank you for joining me this morning. See who's there. Matthew, it's nice to see you. And Randy, good morning. Morning, morning, everybody. Um, look forward to seeing everybody tonight at 6. Um, we'll see what happens tonight and uh, how that goes. Uh, love y'all. Have a good day.